Officials say the bodies of four people who were found frozen near the Manitoba-U.S. border may have been part of a larger human smuggling operation. You'll recall this. A man, a woman, a teen, and a baby were found last week just meters from their destination, the U.S. border. They are believed to be part of the same family from India, and their story shows the desperation of people who are trying to make the crossing. Well, today, we're looking into the extent of this issue and what our country is doing about it. Joining us this morning is Julie Young. She holds the Canada Research Chair in Critical Border Studies and is an assistant professor at the University of Lethbridge. Good morning to you. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Uh, investigators learning more say that these four were part of a larger group of Indian nationals. They were trying to get into the U.S. by way of Canada. A man from Florida has now been charged with human smuggling. How common are cases like this? You know, it's difficult to say because, by definition, human smuggling cases are meant to stay off the radar. Uh, but we know that it is a significant problem globally. And I would say that probably U.S. and Canadian officials could give you data on apprehension, so people who were caught trying to cross the border. But that, that would, those numbers would likely be an, a serious underestimation of the numbers of people who, you know, are, are really interested in trying to find ways to move across borders and may employ the services of a smuggler or trafficker. And I should say that crossing borders in this way is not the only way in which smuggling can happen. There, there are situations even within a country like Canada where people can find themselves sort of under the sway of people they have paid to help them get into the country. According to court documents, one man paid what's only being described as a significant amount of money to enter from Canada from India. So how much are people being charged for something like this? It really varies, Anne-Marie. So it could range from thousands of dollars up to, you know, even $100,000. It would really depend on the size of the group. You know, the fact that, that it seems like this family had an infant may have meant that they paid more. And really, it, it sort of, it, it really depends on the situation. Often families might put up property even as collateral Right. So that in, in terms of homes or businesses or even land, um, hoping that they'll be able to pay off that debt. Right. And reclaim that property on the other side. And often smuggling is or migration, sorry, is a family strategy. Right. Yeah. So families might pool their money um, at, to support an individual or a, a small group of the family to go abroad and then to send money home. Are operations like these becoming more widespread? And, and if so, what's driving it? It's a good question. I would say it's kind of two things, right? So the fact, the reality that people do want to move, right? They're, and in most cases, people are moving to seek safety or security, whether that's political or, or social or cultural security, and often economic security, right? People mm -hmm. move or are pushed to move because of economic insecurity. But another really important factor, and especially in this case, is restrictive migration policies. And it seems counterintuitive, right? When a case like this happens, often the response the response of governments is to try to implement more restrictive policies to make mm -hmm. it harder for smugglers to get people across the border. And in fact, what the research shows is that harsher migration policies often drive people to smugglers, right? It incentivizes smuggling. And so, in fact, harsher border measures can have actually endangered people. They have really facilitated and supported human smuggling and trafficking, and they're really costly, right? Countries invest a lot of money in border security and border policing policies that could be spent in other policy areas, but even beyond that, the cost and human suffering and even death is, is often facilitated by these policies. Julian, good to have you with us this morning. Thanks for being part of your morning. Thanks so much, Anne-Marie. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.